As far as DC goes, I think it's the first real live action attempt to build um, like this grander world, right? Where it's not just focused on, you know, on one hero and maybe, you know, a couple of those ancillary characters like we saw with the Dark Knight trilogy. You know, it's really focused on Batman and a couple of his villains. But other than that, there wasn't really much effect in the rest of the world. Same thing that we've seen in the past with, um, you know, Really, even with the other Superman movies, of course, some of those were global threats, but we really didn't have anything connecting these other major players in the DC universe together. Whereas the Snyderverse was the first real attempt to do that. Obviously, it was a reaction to Marvel's MCU. Um, but, you know, instead of directly following that formula and trying to make a direct copy of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which really wouldn't have, I don't think, been too appealing to most people, as we saw with Justice League 2017, um, you know, instead what Zack decided to do was kind of tell a different story. And instead of, you know, hopping into these characters, <laughs> instead of doing maybe all origin stories or all characters that are already established, he decided to yeah. mix it up a little bit and have a true like Superman origin story, which outside of Smallville, we've never really seen live action like that before. Um, and then also take a Batman who has been Batman so long that, you know, he's seen Gotham like, 20 years in Gotham and it's done nothing, right? Like it's only gotten worse since he's been there. So you have this, this very interesting dynamic between those two characters right away as well as all these tie-ins to the greater world. And what we're about to see with Zack Snyder's Justice League is going to be, there is going to be so many DC characters that are brought yeah. into play, uh, whether you're talking about villains, whether you're talking about heroes, whether you're just talking about name drops and references. Mm -hmm. We just found out on Joe Mangiello's uh, oh, yeah. sword uh, yeah. if for the Nightmare Deathstroke, it's like a Ra's al Ghul pin. Mm -hmm. So that means mm -hmm. Rachel Ghoul does certainly exist in the Snyder verse, but what role does he play? Who knows? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's that's really kind of what makes it important. So I, <laughs> well, first off, why it's important? So I just like just right off the bat, um, like whether or not you're a fan of his movies or, or anything like that, like this is a win for fandom, yeah. like in general, and like I, I don't know. <laughs> People like to call us toxic. People like to call us a cult. But most times whenever we do act toxic, it's kind of in rebuttal to someone who's already starting something with us because it's the wrong fandom that got a win. It's the wrong director who got vindicated or like whatever, like whatever hatred they have towards Zack Snyder. It's most of the time, a chunk of the time, just because they don't like Zack Snyder. Okay, That's fine. Right. You don't like Zack. <laughs> you don't like the way you don't have to like everyone who makes movies. So, but like, we're excited and they come into our mentions and they're like, it's still going to be shit. It's still going to, it's going to be the same movie. It's the same lies for the past two, two, three years. And that's pretty much the reason why at least it's important to us. And that is we've been vindicated. Zack Snyder has been vindicated. And now we have something to look forward to that we've known has been in existence for like ever since he started filming it in 2016.